Hi everyone, I'm uh, Quincy Morgan. I am uh, talking about canoe and kayak trails in OpenStreetMap. I've been mapping them for over the last year. Um, I'm tech lead OpenStreetMap US, but I'm also a mapper and developer. Um, this talks more about my personal interests and hobbies, uh, and they're inspired by my work at OpenStreetMap US, but not directly um, related to it. Uh, water trails have many names. Canoe trails, kayak trails, paddle trails, <laughs> blue ways, um, whitewater rafting routes. All these are what we're talking about today. Uh, paddling is of, is, of course, recreational. Um, not many people would do this, uh, you know, if they had to, but some people do it because they think it's a lot of fun. Um, but there's also flat water paddling. Um, it's very common, especially in the eastern United States um, and also in Canada. I know there's not a ton of, uh, of, of rivers out here, but, you know, a lot of uh, reservoirs and stuff you can paddle as well. Um, National Park Service has national water trail designations since 2012, and there's various recreational trails uh, that have been designated uh, before then all over the country. Uh, but paddling is also transport. Um, in the U.S. and also countries around the world, uh, people rely on um, paddle boats to, to get around and do commerce. And historically, that's been done uh, all over North America and um, around the world for thousands of years. Um, so there's a long history of paddling. Uh, so background, I was on Wikipedia and I noticed this Northern Forest Canoe Trail page. I thought it was incredibly interesting. Over 700 mile trail that can take you um, all the way from uh, the Adirondacks in New York to the Allagash in Maine on inland waterways with various portages to get between different river basins. And sometimes they're uh, um, very urban uh, settings and also they can be extremely remote settings. And people do this trip um, sometimes all at once, you know, uh, camping along the way, and sometimes they just do a segment of the trip. And this inspired me to, to, to ask the question, um, you know, we have these different trail conservancies that have information about their water trails, but um, how do we map this in OpenStreetMap? Um, there's all these different kinds of places that, uh, that you can canoe and designated for canoeing. And I know how to map um, trails on land. Um, if you don't know, OpenStreetMap has keys and values to designate different attributes. and they're sometimes up to debate, but a lot of them are very well established. Uh, so I know how to map those, but how do we map water trails? And the exi existing tagging <laughs> I've found has been inconsistent, incomplete, and often hard to map and interpret. People have been trying to map these for um, over a decade, but um, we want tagging that is unambiguous, it's easy to map, and it's also useful to end users, such as trails apps, or, uh, or renders, or, or routers, or what have you. Um, so I'm going to give some recommendations for what I've been doing, but there's caveats. So there's no official tags in OpenStreetMap. Um, the tagging could change over time. If you're watching this recording in the future, uh, you might want to check out what's the latest uh, guidance, and also you can use other tags if you think they're better. I've documented everything in this talk on the Water Trails page on the wiki, and all these uh, tags are available to, uh, to be updated and, and used. So first off, we use the, uh, the water, existing waterway network for this. Um, you can add a canoe access tag. Canoe equals uh, doesn't just mean canoes. It means kayaks and rafts as well. We just use canoe for convenience. And um, generally, uh, most large waterways are public access. If you're able to, uh, to legally enter the water, you can canoe down them. Um, useful combinations to use are uh, we want to know if it's a tidal river. Um, we want to know if it's intermittent throughout the entire year, if you can if, there's, if it runs dry part of the year, that's really important. If it's covered by a bridge or something, there might be low clearance. If you can paddle in both directions, that's really important for, um, for going up and down streams if it has a really strong current. Uh, the source tag, so you can see where you got your information from, and also different types of access. So if ships or motorboats can go by, that might not be the ideal place to, to paddle uh, if it's a, you know, a real I know, a tidal estuary that has a lot of ship traffic or something. Alternatively, people have been using the boat tag, which I think is not very useful at all. <laughs> um, it doesn't imply what kind of boat you can, you can use on the waterway. Um, so I recommend using the canoe tag. Um, an important factor that is um, different than land trails is that we need to have carries to, to get between different waterways at times. Um, previously, people have used all kinds of tags to try to map these. I found them all sort of lacking, so I've started using the tag um, portage, which just is an access tag for somebody carrying a boat. Um, and there's all these different circumstances where there might be a designated portage trail, and we know that's a great uh, place to, to portage, but also um, 
some place might be private property, but they lie to Portage, so that's permissive, or sometimes it could be all overgrown, you might make that uh, discouraged. And we can use all of our um, different trail tags and uh, road tags to, uh, to map those ways on land as well. Um, so here's some examples. So if it's signed, you can use the designated tag. Um, sometimes they interface with urban areas, and if they're on private property, you might use permissive tag. Um, you can also use them just to get between access points, like parking lots, um, going to the beach and, and such, uh, so you know where to carry your boat to. Um, and even in a stream, you can say that this stream is not deep enough to paddle, but it is deep enough to carry your boat, and that be, might be useful to get between uh, different lakes. Um, and also some people haul their, uh, their boats with hand carts, so you can use the hand cart equals yes tag. Um, in this case, I guess the person didn't want to, uh, to carry the boat and get stuck in the mud. Um, and so here you can see an example where all these different road segments have uh, a different portage tag. They all have different attributes, but um, this, you can still route along this line and have uh, rich information about the trail. And then you can uh, tie all those portage segments together into a relation, if you like, um, to keep them up to date and add the name and the operator and such uh, tags like that. Um, really important is rapids and obstructions. This is, can be a matter of life and death at times, and you don't want to go down a trail, uh, uh, start paddling a, a creek, and suddenly hit classic rapids. Um, prior to this, there was this whitewater scheme. Um, which I found to be just inconsistently used. Uh, people used all different sorts of tags to uh, mean the same thing. Um, so I recommend using this improved tagging. You can just say your rapids equals yes or no on a segment, and then you can add a number to indicate the, uh, the international um, rapids uh, classification. If it's not runnable at all, you can do rapids equal x uh, because you don't want to go down there. Um, you can add different information about the rapids, uh, the name and description, and you can give general canoe descriptions on waterways too to say, uh, give people instructions or recommendations on uh, how to paddle it. Uh, so here's an example. You can see, clearly see from the aerial imagery that there's rapids, so you could say rapids equals yes. Um, if you have on the ground knowledge or a different source, you can say the class of the rapids. Um, maybe this segment at different times of years, different class of rapids, or different parts of the segment or slightly different classes. You can use semicolons to delineate those. Um, and also the, the bounding area you can map uh, with the rapids tag as well. And if you have a specific segment of rapids, which is mapped separately from the river, then you can use a water equals rapids and also use the rapids tag. Um, you can also map these as points. Um, say a rapid has a specific name and you want it to show up on the renderer um, and in um, Geocoding, uh, you can map them as lines so that you can little, you can uh, make these look really nice on maps just to see where the uh, different drops are. Um, and of course, different types of hazards. Waterfalls are usually canoe equals no. You can use the canoe tag on those to indicate whether or not they're runnable, and also the rapids tag. Uh, dams are sometimes huge or sometimes small, but um, you can use canoe equals yes or no. Uh, generally, we uh, are not able to canoe over dams. And weirs are extremely dangerous uh, low head dams, um, which can uh, which kill hundreds of people every year uh, around the U.S. So we want to make sure that we uh, make sure people avoid those. Open water I find more terrifying than rapids because it can seem calm but then change at any time. So I've started mapping that somewhat differently. If you have a, a waterway that flows through a lake, you can say waterway equals flow line. You can add the name as a separate tag to. Uh, to, so a router can say, oh, paddle five miles through Seneca Lake. And then you can use open water equals yes or no to indicate um, the danger level of the water, if it's protected by um, breakwaters or not. Uh, so here's an example. A river would be open water equals no, if it's um, relatively narrow. Something that goes out into a large body of water would be open water equals yes. And you can use waterway equals flow line for this too. Uh, waterway equals fairway, I've been using to, to map paths that just go along a lake shore. Um, and you can say open water equals partial um, because it's protected on one side but not the other side. And the end goal is we want a completely routable paddle network the way we have for, um, for pedestrians, for trails, and for roads. Um, so here's just an example of how to do a portage, a little segment. Um, you can map the dam and say canoe equals no. It's very important to say canoe equals no on the river itself that goes through the dam. Um, the other parts of the river can be canoe equals yes or, or uh, 
um, designated or permissive or what have you. Um, the portage is mapped as a path. And the uh, important innovation is that you want to connect all the waterways and the, the access points on land with water equals length, so that way the router can move between them. And you can also use access tags on that, so canoe equals yes. Or cases, um, this is a slipway, so we uh, allow motorboats to go there as two, probably sailboats, and what have you. You can also connect all the segments of a canoe route into a route relation. Um, so you want to include all the portage, portages and links as well as the water segments. And we don't necessarily pe uh, expect people to um, paddle the entire thing at once, but uh, this just lets you keep all the information together. It's the same as if you were um, making a relation for the Appalachian Trail or a trail near your uh, house. And we have a visualization for this on the Open Trail Map tool. Uh, and as you can see, we have um, the portages and the access points and the, uh, the segments on the water that are paddleable. And you can select them to, uh, to get more information about them. Um, here's an example where the map shows you how to paddle to an island and find different access points on the island using um, the waterways, uh, using a slipway on land to, to start your journey. Um, and in the end, I did end up mapping the entire Northern Forest Canoe Trail from uh, New York to Maine, um, which is very extensive, including all portages. And ultimately, my uh, goal is to make the first comprehensive map of uh, paddleable uh, waterways throughout the world. Um, so if you're in Maine and you want to paddle down to, uh, to Florida or <laughs> you know, even farther, you, that um, it can give you instructions on, on how to do all or part of that journey. Um, and of course, this is all OpenStreetMap, open data. So if you have an app that is interested in uh, giving people canoe uh, uh, directions and in instructions, then um, you can consume this data right away. I use my attributions for all the images. Thank you to everyone who uh, contributes open media. Uh, and you can get involved. Uh, come see me. We have a paddle channel in OpenStreetMap Slack. You can go to openstreetmap.us slash slack to, to get on our Slack. And there's a more extensive open trail map talk I'm giving at 1.30 p.m. today right here in uh, the ballroom. And that's my time. Thanks so much.